In this episode, we take a good look at part of my Black Friday playing cards haul, including looks at a couple of decks specifically released for the post Thanksgiving sale rush. We also announce the winner of the Voyager playing cards. All that coming up next. Legend has it that the term Black Friday got its name because it marked the day most retailers saw their yearly sales quotas go from being in a deficit or in the red to being profitable or in the black. Nowadays, we just know it as a crazy day where people line up outside of stores in the middle of the night to trample over each other at the chance of buying a TV. I prefer to participate from home whenever possible, but I guess that's easy enough to say when you're shopping for playing cards and not TVs. Anyway, that brings us to right now. Several playing card retailers and manufacturers announced new releases in the lead up to Black Friday. And well, frankly, I couldn't resist. In fact, hey babe, do you mind going in the other room for a second? Anyway, let's see. I managed to snag the David Blaine's gold split spades and the Dan and Dave slash anyone worldwide smoke collaboration. Both of those will be getting the longer review treatment soon enough. But in this episode, we're going to look at three decks that on the surface all fit the black vibe quite well. The Black Hudson's from Theory 11, the Black Wheel deck from DKNG and Art of Play, and the latest, a Black Boxed Red Hellions from Illusionist. Welcome back to the go-to channel for the playing cards enthusiast. I'm the Gentleman Wake. If you are new here, we hope this episode we have in store for you will compel you to like and subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, then make sure to hit that notification bell to be alerted every time we post a new video. Before we get into it, you definitely want to stay all the way to the end of this video for your chance to win a black wheel deck directly from me. Details for that giveaway a little bit later on. One more thing, comment below and let me know what product, playing cards related or not, you'd love to see get the Gentleman Wake review treatment. Looking forward to reading those. First up, these are the Black Hudsons from Theory 11. This black colorway version of the deck, a second iteration of the Hudsons, was specifically created for the Black Friday event release. The deck comes in an attractive charcoal gray tuck box with gold foil and glossy black accents. The design of the tuck box is a standout feature of most Theory 11 releases, and this one is no different. I reviewed the original green version of the Hudson deck in detail on this channel a few months ago, and a lot of what I said in that review applies here. Just astonishing detail when it comes to tuck case and back design. It's one of my recent favorites from Theory 11, but if you've ever watched a Theory 11 deck review from yours truly, you know there's one area where I wish they'd just go a bit further. The back design of the Black Hudsons again features some nicely architecturally inspired artwork, this time in thin black line work rather than the mint green of the previous edition. Truth be told, never was there a more perfect time to make a deck dual tone than this. A black field with gold metallic ink against white poker border was the way to go here. And again, it's a missed opportunity. We know they've done it before as evidence with the citizens deck. It's just an odd non choice. The faces are standard with recolored metallic ink standard bicycle courts. The ace is of course nicely embellished. The deck handles great as expected from the USPCC. It's modern cut air cushion finish. This version has slightly thicker stock than the green version did which could help durability. These are great for gameplay and magic but a bit nondescript in the monochromatic black and white motif for cardistry. The black as well as the green Hudson decks are still available at Theory11.com. Coming up, we take a look at the DKNG black wheel deck. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Let's take another look at a Black Friday recolored release, this time from Art of Play. I previously reviewed the entire line of wheel playing cards, 
red, blue, and green on this channel. And it's safe to say that I really like the DKNG designed modernized interpretation of the standard bicycle deck. So I guess I was quickly intrigued by the black on black treatment of the tuck case of this new version. The black wheel playing cards come in a matte black premium quality paper stock tuck case embossed with black glossy ink. The design is identical to previous wheel decks down to the sugar skulls and shared wheel bicycle back design. The black on black is a sleek combination that is definitely subtle, almost stealthy from a distance looking like a plain black box. The only spot of color comes from the red and gold foil seal that holds the tuck flap in place. Pulling the deck from the box reveals the black colorway back design, again identical to previous versions with the exception of color. The backs are subtly one way thanks in part to the four pips in each corner. These are completely custom cards, pips, indices, placement and quartz are all magnificently done. The black version also uses the two shades of gold metallic ink found in the red edition. The pips are two toned and uniquely shaped and placed. The same brilliantly designed borderless court cards of previous versions can be found here as well. They are all reminiscent of bicycle standard courts down to poses and implements, but obviously stylistically modernized. This deck feels amazing. The thin crushed stock is traditionally cut air cushion finish. The high contrast thick black lines make for unique fans and flourishes in a way that the Hudson's deck faint thin line work did not. Included in the deck are a pair of metallic skull jokers, an art of play DKNG ad card, and an additional card meant to act as a replacement for another should a card in the deck be lost or damaged. All in all, a great deck for just about any purpose with a fantastically sleek looking tuck case. All four colorways of the wheel deck, including the new black one, are still up for purchase at artofplay.com. But if you want a chance to win a black wheel deck directly from me, be sure to stay tuned for details. Coming up, my first look at a deck by Daniel Madison, the relatively new Red Hellions by Illusionist. Stay right here. Magician Daniel Madison has amassed quite a following both online and in real life. With his brash and bold sensibilities and his bad boy flair, there's a lot of fertile ground to choose from when it comes to designing a deck of cards. Perhaps some of Daniel's most well-known decks designed in collaboration with Oban Jones when both were still working at Illusionist was his Confessions series, the Martyrs, Sinners, Saints, and Hellions deck. The Hellions has proven to be the most popular and the red version that I'm about to review here represents the fourth iteration of that deck. The tuck box for the Hellions deck includes several atypical choices. For one thing, the box is printed with the tuck flap seemingly upside down on the bottom of the deck. Additionally, what is traditionally considered the front of the tuck is in this case, the back. The tuck case is primarily black with the title in red embossed lettering. There's a blind embossed serpent or devil's tail that makes up the principal design element on the tuck case. The sides are white and feature more blind embossing, type that reads, don't play cards with the devil. The card back design is represented on the back with some minor variations. For instance, the bottom reads open to forfeit all. And there are a couple of symbols that read Daniel Madison and another that says Oban Jones on it. The entire design here on the tuck box is embossed. The card backs feature a slew of intricate details. For one thing, there are devils in each of the four corners. They hold tridents at a downward 45 degree angle, stabbing through the Madison logo, which here takes on an iron rot appearance. There are flames spewing up behind the logo. Several arcane symbols adorn the center of the card backs, promising a connection to the occult. There is of course the double X's in the center. To each side there are small circles depicting pyramids and triangles with the copy as above so below on one symbol and Madison's personal mantra magic is dead on another. The back design on these cards is rife with complex detail and Madison himself actually goes into the impetus for some of these choices citing inspiration from David Blaine's Gatorbacks. You can watch that video linked above 
to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak. He also talks about the inclusion of some of his friends on the deck's court cards, and we'll see those in a second. Included with the deck are two jokers. One features a Faustian contract for relinquishing one's soul to a soul taker. Madison's autograph below identifies him as the soul taker, which leaves a blank space for his victim, presumably you. The second joker, a black crow's feather sitting in an inkwell filled with a red liquid that from context we imagine to be blood. Cause of course, how else would you sign a contract to sell your soul? There are two gaff cards included as well, a double backer which features the unmodified back design on one side, and on the other side, an image of a devil's clawed hand over the back design. Incidentally, the hand is covered in tattoos that make it look very much like Madison's hand. Also included is an Ace of Clubs, Three of Hearts split card designed specifically for a Tony Chung effect. The pips are relatively standard, although the pips for the diamonds and hearts are outlined in black. The size of the spot card pips and their placement is also slightly shrunken from what we've come to know as standard. The power ace in the deck is the ace of diamonds, which includes a nicely illustrated image of another devil and echoes the copy found on the sides of the tuck box. The court cards are unique, most appear strongly rooted in bicycle standard courts with some modifications. For one thing, roughly half of the court cards feature standard figures with closed eyes, as if dead or dying. The other half features some friends and colleagues of Madison's. Mark Carl Bruce is the king of clubs. The deck designer Oban Jones is the king of spades. There's also a hidden nine of spades reveal on the rain guard of the sword. Oban Jones's wife is the Queen of Spades. Rapper Sage Francis appears on the King of Hearts. It's also a one-way design featuring the typical sword in one orientation and a microphone and red devil horns in the other. Madison himself is immortalized on the King of Diamonds. Also one way, he has a card reveal, the Nine of Clubs on one outstretched palm. The deck is printed by Cardamundi on the touted B9 True Linen finish, the same stock and finish as seen on the Copag 310s I previously reviewed in depth on this channel. That means the deck is a little thicker than your standard bicycle decks, but it handles nicely regardless. The deck is modern cut, but farrows well in both directions. The cards flourish and fan nicely and are perfect for gameplay and magic, of course. The Red Hellions deck is still available at Illusionist.com, as are the other decks in Madison's Confessions series. Before we go, congrats to Orange Money 52 for winning the Voyager playing cards giveaway. Contact me via Instagram to claim your prize. For a chance to win a black wheel deck, here's what you gotta do. One, like this video. Two, be a subscriber to this channel. And three, Comment below and tell me which is your favorite black themed deck in your collection. Also, don't forget to comment below as to which product, deck related or not, you'd like to see me review. Special thanks to my Patreon producers for their contributions and thank you so much for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe if you haven't already and also click here to watch another great video. Coming up next time, the National Playing Card Collection Day decks. I've been The Gentleman Wake. See you again soon.